My name is Mary Roach, and I've written a bunch of books, uh, starting with Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers, Bonk, Packing for Mars, and the current one that I'm here to talk about is Gulp, Adventures on the Alimentary Canal. Uh, the writer that I, I remember reading and thinking, this is what I want to do, there were a couple of them. One was uh, Bill Bryson, who uh, just has this ability to explain things and report in a way that you know is endlessly fascinating, and, but always make it entertaining and funny and fresh. There's never a sentence that's flat or just generic. So uh, Susan Orlean is another uh, early influence. I've always like I remember some of a, a story she did in the New Yorker was about a a neighborhood supermarket and just her ability to take something that was seemingly mundane and uninteresting and just making the point that if you if you look closely enough if you dig enough uh, everything is fascinating so uh, you know I'll follow her it's those writers where uh, that, that I'll, you'll follow them anywhere uh, uh, and a really important component of what I do is uh, choosing a topic up front that will enable me to have a little bit of fun with it and uh, I like to have a mix of history, science, quirkiness, fun, so it's very important for me to be very particular about what I end up covering and I, you know, the topics are pretty broad which gives me an opportunity to hopscotch around and just focus on the things I want. Like in Gulp, uh, there's no chapter about the small intestine even though it's incredibly important, that's where all the absorption happens, but I couldn't really find a, I don't know, a lab where they're doing really cool small intestine work. So uh, the small intestine got short shrift. It's like, you know what, you don't get your own chapter because you're not really, it's like, I don't know, it's absorption going on. So uh, whereas there's three chapters on flatulence. The example that I, that I sometimes give to writing students is a, a story that I did on uh, food safety, which is kind of a dull topic, but I found this guy, Chuck Gerba, who uh, goes and hides out in bathroom stalls with a stopwatch to time the average amount of time before the toilet flushes. He's been in gas station bathrooms taking swabs. I went to his home. His kitchen is filthy. This is the food safety guy. So I'm always looking for my Chuck Gerba in any chapter, and I don't, but I don't really know until I get there. And I, often it's just the luck of the draw. It, it, it's actually easier than you would think to find them. You know, they're, they're, um, the boring ones are the exception rather than the rule. I kind of, uh, I started eating more with my nose, meaning that, and I'm not inhaling the food through my <laughs> nose, but I would, uh, I didn't know that we have two sets of nostrils, that you have this, that you're, you have an opening in the back of the mouth into the nose, so when you're exhaling, you're also smelling food. You know, you smell, you think of smelling something you do on the inhale, but you're also doing it on the exhale. So if you hold food in your mouth and exhale, you kind of appreciate the flavors more. So I, I do that, especially with like wine or beer or something with a lot of complex things going on. You, it, it's very interesting to, to do that and to eat more slowly and focus on, I guess I'm a little more focused on it. Mindful would be the word that some people would use. Yeah.